bird ran into your camera and it just like stayed. Oh, this is the this is the good part right here. This is a good life. Hey Karu. This was a couple hours ago down at the Columbia River. And I talked You're Scott man, into Scott. coming down with me, which was really fun. And, uh, we, well, I don't know if it was really fun, but obviously we hung out here the at, the, at the river and did a little cold soak. So I figured I'd make a quick video responding to your last video while we talk about this. Um, or not your last video, your email. So you sent me an email and included three things that I should watch. One was the state of Minnesota speech by the governor. The other one was actually uh, an article by somebody, I, Eisenstein, Jeffrey Eisenstein, I can't remember his first name. Yeah. And the uh, third one was the sci-fi movie of some guy, some Estonian dude from Wisconsin. Um, uh, sci-fi horror, I should say, the invasion of the spiders or something. And I actually watched and listened to and read all three of those. Um, I didn't actually have a lot to add about the sci-fi movie, the cheesy sci-fi, but it was interesting. Um, you know, we got the gratuitous flash of breasts and people dying, but uh, I'm curious, um, I mean, you're more of a connoisseur of that genre than I am. State of the Minnesota address. You know, I, I'm totally disappointed because I feel like what those, what all governors, what all leaders should be saying right now is, this is the current state. This is where we are. This is what we see happening. This is what we expect to happen over the next two weeks or month. This is our time frame. This is how we're going to respond to what happens. And you can expect things to change when we see these changes in the numbers of cases and the numbers of deaths. And this is how we're going to move forward and transition from this total lockdown to a more normal functioning of society again. And I'm not hearing anyone say those things. Um, and I felt like the governor of Minnesota basically gave a rah, rah, everybody get on board and do what you're told speech, which doesn't give me any confidence in all at all in, you know, the competence of leadership. Anyway, and that, of course, dovetails into the that long article by uh, Eisenstein. And um, it was interesting because I felt like his critique of the current state of the situation and the responses of the government and our willingness to submit to authoritarian type solutions was right on. Um, and people need to say that. Somebody needs to say that because it's, it's an important point. Unfortunately, he then devolves into a pseudo-scientific mystical um, set of solutions. And I was I, I actually uh, Scott O'Daniel also read the article and Sarah did and I talked to them about it. And one of the things we talked about is the idea that you know if you're a relatively intelligent critical person and you can you can find the errors and things that are going on um, and you can figure out what the right questions to ask are, which I feel like Eisenstein does. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that you, because you're smart enough to do that, that you're smart enough to figure out what the solution should be. And unfortunately, I think the solutions require specific domain expertise, that just being smart isn't good enough to offer good solutions because we don't understand, I don't understand, and somebody like Eisenstein doesn't understand. Um, what the implications are and doesn't understand the science um, well enough. And so you need somebody like that to rely on domain experts to provide 
uh, feedback and, and provide solutions and answer the questions. I mean, the, the job of a leader should be to ask the right questions and let experts provide answers and steer the experts towards uh, long-term solutions. And I think we're missing that. Um, so anyway, um, the, the really sad thing is I feel like there's not room publicly to have those discussions right now because if you try to have those discussions, you're shouted down or you're told you're killing people. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'll let the rest of this video play out. Uh, thanks for introducing me to this sickness. Off. Where's your power button? It's in the middle in the back. Oh, okay. It looks like you got uh, seven minutes and 19 seconds left. Ah, <laughs> oh, darn it. Nice try. All right, I'm going to dunk my head. Okay. I'm feeling it today. Actually, I don't mind being out of the water. Like... I know. It doesn't, it doesn't feel that bad. Actually, you, uh, you were in for five minutes because you went in before I did. All right, here goes. Good job. There's parts of me I genuinely can't feel. Yeah, I know. I know, you're totally numb. seem like the coat's important. I know. Everything seems warm compared to that. 